So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about growth factors and cancer and how they're related and how genes can affect cancer. So cancer is essentially the ability uh, or the loss of the ability to control cell division. And it can be caused by various factors. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So growth factors can create cancer when they are kind of out of control. There's a group of genes called proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes normally activate cell division. Uh, they are growth factor genes. They are genes that produce growth factors, so they would cause cells to divide. They become oncogenes or cancer-causing when they have a mutation where they're basically turned on all the time. So if they're switched on, they cause cancer. Okay. An example is, R is RAS, R -S, which activates cyclins, which we know are things that are needed for the cell to move through the uh, checkpoints. And then there are tumor suppressor genes. These are basically the opposite of proto-oncogenes. They normally inhibit cell division. They're normally on. It can be switched off and cause cancer. Example is P53, sometimes referred to as the guardian angel gene. So these genes, uh, when they have mutations in them, is when they become cancerous. And it's usually not a single mutation, but it's multiple mutations within that single gene that causes it to become cancerous. And that's why most types of cancer happen as we get older. It takes time for those mutations to occur. So cancer, like I said, is essentially a failure of cell division control. Unrestrained, uncontrolled cell growth that produces abnormal cells that don't function properly, that crowd out the normal cells. And one of the things that happens with cancer cells and tumors is that you know, most cells, when they make contact, there's that contact inhibition. But cancer cells don't have that. They just crowd out the healthy tissue, and that's how they cause disease. So what is lost? Well, the checkpoint is, is where we normally would stop these abnormal cells from dividing. But in cancer, it skips through those checkpoints even when the cell doesn't meet the criteria. So P P53, which was discovered at, at Stony Brook University by Dr. Arnold Levine, plays a key role at the G1S checkpoint. P53 normally would halt cell division if it detects damaged DNA. The DNA is not copied properly, the mistake in copying the DNA, something like that. And it'll do one of several things. It may cause the cell to produce DNA repair enzymes to fix the problem. It may cause the cell to go into a resting state, and it may just live out the rest of its life until it wears out. It may cause the cell to stay in G1 until the problem can be fixed. Or it may cause the cell to go through apoptosis, or basically commit cell suicide so it doesn't lead to cancer. All cancers have to shut down P53 activity. That's why it's sometimes referred to the guardian angel gene. So this is kind of showing you graphically what happens with P53 if it's when it's functioning normally and then when it's damaged and when cancer can occur. So cancer develops only after cell experiences six key mutations or six key hits. Unlimited growth. Um, turns on growth promoting genes. It ignores checkpoints, turns off tumor suppressor genes like P53. It escapes apoptosis, turns off the, the apoptosis or cell suicide genes, and becomes immortal. Most cells can only divide a certain number of times because of the telomeres and telomerase, but P53 or cancers become immortal. Their telomerase gene gets reactivated. promotes blood, blood vessel growth, which allows the, the cancer to have plenty of nutrients and, and also sometimes to spread or metastasize, and overcomes anchor and density dependent. So cancer cells don't have anchor and dependent. They don't have to be attached something to grow. And they don't have contact inhibition or density dependent inhibition. What causes these hits? Causes mutations? Well, mutations can happen a lot of things. Uh, 
high energy radiation like UV radiation can damage DNA, lead to mutation. Exposure to certain chemicals, mutagens, carcinogens, sometimes heat. A cigarette smoke contains lots of carcinogenic and mutagenic substances. Pollution can contain harmful substances. And simply age. As cells get older, there's a greater chance that mistakes can happen in copying the DNA. And genetics. Inheriting certain genes predisposes us to certain types of cancer. So a tumor is a mass of abnormal cells uh, that crowds out normal tissue. A benign tumor is an abnormal lump that just will, will stay at the original site as a lump. It's you know, oftentimes not going to cause too many problems and depending on where it is. It may or may not have to be removed. P53 is, has halted cell divisions in a benign tumor. Most do not cause serious problems. It can be removed by surgery if needed. A malignant tumor, on their hand, the cell can metastasize, spread from the original site, lose attachment to nearby cells carried by blood vessels linked to other tissues, create a new tumor through metastasis. And instead of causing an impairment of function in one organ, it can impair functions of organs throughout the body. So the treatments we have for cancer target rapidly dividing cells, because that's what cancer cells are. But it's also what's responsible for many of the side effects that go along with uh, cancer treatment. High energy radiation kills cells, but it kills healthy and cancer cells. So there's some side effects there. Chemotherapy are chemicals that specifically target cells and stop DNA replication, which stops cell division. Um, they stop mitosis, cytokinesis, they stop blood vessel growth. They basically help stop the spread of the tumor and, and possibly shrink the tumor. But again, any cells in the body that are dividing are going to be affected by the chemotherapy. So anything that's growing, like your hair, for instance, why hair often falls out, uh, your bone marrow, because it's dividing and producing blood cells, oftentimes is affected and leads to anemia. So there's been some new drugs that have been developed recently, like Gleevec, uh, for treating certain types of cancer like uh, adult leukemias, stomach cancers. Uh, it was the first successful drug that targets only the cancer cells. So it doesn't have the side effects that other cancer treatments have. And there are lots of others. Uh, and certain cancer, certain chemotherapies, certain treatments are better for different types of cancer. 